service. How are you today? <laughs> How are you? How have you been? How is school? How is family? Hey, hey. Well, 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 as you can see, my name is Uncle Capale Francis together with Auntie Robina and we are so, so happy to have you join us for service today. Amazing. So Aunt Robina. Yes. Do you have a heart? Yes, I do. Where do you find the heart? Mm, right here. Ah! Right here. <laughs> First of all, how do they do it? I like see this. some children do this, others do this. How do they do it? Something like this. Heart. Ah! Yes. Well, today in our lesson, we're going to talk about... Remember, we've been learning about the awesome God. The first week we talked about is all-powerful, and then last Sunday, we talked about that he's all-knowing. And today, we're going to talk about that our awesome God is all-loving. Yes. <laughs> Uncle Kapale. Uh -huh. Our God is all-loving, right? Mm, that's true. Mm -hmm. mm. And we all have hearts, like uh -huh. this one, right? Pum, 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 pum. True, true, true. Mm. What are some of the things that make you feel loved? Mm -hmm. Children, that's a beautiful question. What are some of the things that make you feel loved? As for me, mm -hmm. um, when you buy me milkshake. Oh. Hey, hey. Okay. How about you? Hmm. A gift, a very special gift. Like mm. hunky, mm -mm. stocking. That's not very special. Uh huh. We that, that's enough. It's the children's turn <laughs> to answer. Children, what are some of the Things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh huh. That's very correct. That's true. So, children, let's pray and then we carry on with our service as we talk about the awesome God who is all loving. Let's pray together. Hands together. Eyes closed. Loving Jesus. We come before you and give you praise and thanks. Thank you for loving us. And even when we go through this service, we know that you love us and that we are going to have a wonderful time. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. That's, a, that's a sound of my heart. Ah, okay. Let's join the worship team as we pop, 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 Children, welcome to church. It's a brand new day. We are going to bring the dust for our Savior. Are you ready? Come on. Everybody, clap your hands. <laughs> You're doing great. Let's do it again. Uh, uh. Yeah. It's a brand new day. Brand new day. So I give.
Wow, welcome back to this part of our session where we get to talk about God's word. Are you excited? I am excited. Pastor Robert is my name. I just want to take a minute or two to remind you. Through our kids' production, This Is Me, we have a devotional that tells us what Jesus says we are. And we just don't want to keep that material seated on the shelf. We want it to impact your lives and you'll be able to use it. So my word goes out to you, parents, teachers, children, head teachers, schools. This material is for free. You don't need to be coming to Bututu Church, but material can help you so you can grow in your journey with Jesus. Please reach out to us at kidsconnect at watutuchurch.com so that you can be able to be enriched and growing in his word. Wonderful. So I can't wait. Please get in touch. Even write to us. Want to hear the feedback. How is this material going? Is it impacting your life as you go along? So friends, please don't let us put it on the shelf. It is available for you. Okay, once again, we're going to continue on our journey. Awesome God, do it again from that beautiful scripture where the prophet looked back and he was amazed. He heard of what God has done and he was asking him, please do it again in our day. I know he went through 40 days of prayer and fasting and we are praying God to do things again in our lives. Is it protection? Is it provision? Is it healing? What is it that you want God to do? He's able to do it again. So we are believing God together, my friends. So as we continue on this journey of how awesome is our God, his nature makes him awesome. When you think about it, the other time we we're talking about how God is all powerful. And I remember I had, he holds this all world, all these countries in there, water, everything, he put it in place. So he holds it together. That is a powerful God. Remember, if his hand went like that, what would happen? He doesn't let that happen because he is awesome. He holds things together. Let's never forget. And I know last week we, get to, we continued and we talked about God being all-knowing. He knows more than the teachers, than the scientists, than our parents. He is God. He is all-knowing. And we have to celebrate him for who he is. So this week, oh, just a moment. Come on. Settle in, my friend. Ooh, don't take a few minutes of our time. All right, that's done. Thank you. The world is back in its place. All right, we're talking about our awesome God. This week, we're talking about awesome God, all loving. I'm telling you, this God is love. His nature is love. He never stops loving. He loves the sinners. He loves those who love him. He loves even those who don't love him. That's the kind of God we're talking about. But I wonder, how do you love to be loved? How do you express love to the people that you love? What do you do? What do you see other people do when they love someone? How does your mommy love your daddy or your daddy loves your mommy or your mommy loves you or you love your sister? I know some children, you fight each other to show love. That's not good. Stop fighting. Love your friends without fighting. We get to share. We share our drinks, our eats, our clothes, our beds, our spaces, our paints, our tabs, our games. So we are not selfish, but we get to share. We show love to other people. I know, I know some people, we are in a month, we had a month where people were celebrating love. So we saw red roses going, flowers, chocolates. People share love differently. Some people share love through going to the beach. Some of us, our parents share love by paying school fees for us, taking us to school. Beautiful schools, because they care and love us. Others, they love us, that they feed us. We never run out of food. There is always food in the fridge. We have drinks. When we ask, mommy, daddy, they provide because they love us. Our God loves more than your mommy, your daddy, your friends. Everyone puts together because he provided everything that our moms and dads provide for us because he loves. There's a scripture in the Bible that reminds us that God talks about if our earthly fathers can give us bread when we ask. How much more can he do? That is the God who loves us. In fact, he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you and me so that we do not end up dying forever, but we could end up 
having time with him in eternity. He's looking forward to you and me meeting him in heaven, spending time with him all day, all night, all the time. So that's the kind of God. He sent his son to die for you and me. Romans 3.23 talks about the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned. So if you go back to Romans 6, uh, 23, it tells us he doesn't want us to die. So he sent his son so that you and me, we, we might not end up dying. So Jesus, Jesus took your place and took my place. That is if, if you have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior, you have to take an I acknowledge you died for me. I am a sinner. Come in my heart. I don't want to die forever. I want to be with God and you in eternity. In fact, right now, if you've not said that prayer, can we pray with you before I continue? I don't want to leave that space. That's the only reason why we do what we do. So that people don't end up perishing. So, close your eyes in a moment. Close your eyes. Don't look at your neighbor. You think about your own heart right now. Just say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I don't want to die forever. I want to be with you in eternity. Come into my heart and be my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God's nature is love. He gives freely to everyone. He is loving. This is the other thing he did. Uh, Paul writes, uh, 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 writes in one of his books in 1 Corinthians 13, teaching us about who God is. And he talks about love. So if you go to John 13, 4, we read from there and continue down. This is what it says. Love is patient. That is God. God is patient. You and me will die out of our sin, but he chose to be patient until when we can pray that simple prayer we have prayed. So that is God. Love is kind. God is kind. Does not envy. It does not boast. It does not, it's not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. All those are things about God. He is patient when we sin. He gives us chances. He doesn't boast, oh, I'm God, I'm love. No, 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 no. He stays in his place until when we are ready to receive him. Okay? That is our God. He keeps no record of wrongs. Love keeps no records of wrongs. Children, how many times do your friends hurt you? You go to mommy, mommy, he did this, he kicked me. In fact, he took my pencil. Then the next time you come back, please forgive him. No, I won't forgive him. But God is not like that. Even next time when they come and they do something, you remind them. Last time you took my pencil, this time you took my shirt, now you are stealing my bread. No, God doesn't do that. He doesn't keep a record of wrongs when he says, I have forgiven you. You are my child. Your sins are remembered no more. As I'm talking about this, I remember a story in the Bible about the prodigal son. Jesus talked about it. This son went to his dad and told his dad, give me my property. Give me. Can you imagine going to your dad when he's still alive and you're telling him, give me your land. Give me your car. Give me. It is mine. Yet you didn't even work for it. But then you're telling him, give it to me. I gotta go. So the dad was nice. He gave him everything. And the man went. He spent it. Then he ended up eating with the pigs. Can you imagine being the richest? And then you end up eating with the pigs. Then he came back to his senses. He said, no, the servants in my father's house eat very well. Let me go back. But as he went back on his way, his father saw him from afar. He came running, opened his, hugged him, gave him literally everything. That is the kind of God, that's the father's love he has for you and me. Our God he is love. That's what makes him amazing. That's why when we talk about it and say, wow, awesome God, he is love. He loves you and me. He gave us Jesus, but he just didn't give us Jesus. After we know Jesus, he has a mandate for us. This is what he told his, uh, one of his disciples, Peter. Oh, by the way, do you know that I am also loved by my God? I am loved. I hope you are loved, remember. But after we have been loved, this is what he asks us to do. This is what he says. Um, uh, he says it in his word in John 21, 
15 to 17, he did ask Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to, to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, do you truly love me? More than these things? He was asking his disciples. So Jesus is asking you, are you his disciple? Are you his follower? Then we are his disciples. He's asking, do you really love me more than the iPad, the pencils, the clothes you have, the nice cars, your awesome bed, your whatever bed cover that you like that has your best character, Spider-Man? But he's saying, do you love me? And this is what the Peter says. Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Like some of us can say, yes, we know, yes, they love me. But Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. And then he asked him again, do you love me, Simon? Son of John. Truly, I love you, Lord. He said, feed my sheep. So you and me who love Jesus is asking us not to sit on the love we have experienced and just keep it to ourselves. No, he wants us to tell others about him. So that's my challenge this week for you, that after we have experienced the awesome God who is amazing, all-powerful, all-loving, ever-present, you and me, we need to do something. We need to tell other people about Jesus so that they can also come to that fellowship with him. Would you like to see your grandpa, your pa, your mom, maybe your friends end up in hell in a burning fire? No. That's why he's saying, feed my sheep. He's telling us, tell them about me. I am love. I am waiting for them. Just like that prodigal son, so they can come back to me and I can hug them and I give them life internal. So all of us, as long as we believe in Jesus, we are followers of Jesus. We have one assignment, one assignment, before I add the other one, to tell people about Jesus. So this week, find a friend. Find, don't find a friend who knows Jesus. Find a friend who doesn't know Jesus. Pray for them first and ask Holy Spirit to go before you to prepare their hearts. Then go tell them about Jesus and you pray for them again. And we'll make them become our focus one so that we can pray for them and see them become children of God as well. So from me to you, our awesome God is all loving. Since we know he's loving, what should we do with his love? We need to share that love with other people. So children of God, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving you a challenge this week. Tell someone about Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends. As this week we are venturing out to tell someone about you, give us the courage, give us the strength. Help us to remember to tell someone about Jesus who is love and he loves and he loves. We thank you, we honor you in Jesus' name we've prayed. I love you, bye-bye, God bless you. Can't wait to see you guys. See you, I love you. Yes, I do, yes, I do. Feed Jesus is sheep. Children are going to sing this beautiful song together. It basically says that the blood of Jesus is powerful. The blood of Jesus is more than enough to heal us, more than enough to save us, more than enough to redeem us. And right now, we're going to declare this very powerful song into our lives. It was your precious blood that washed my sin away made me whole again oh the blood nothing but your blood jesus you paid it all once and for all let's sing it again it was the blood your precious
your blood is more than enough. And right now we're going to declare this together, children. Let's sing it out. It was more than enough. It was more than enough. All the power of your blood has set me free. It was more than enough. It was more than enough. It is finished at the feet. Yes. 